Hey there guys, the Nitroberg here. Hope you've been doing well. So in this video, we will be talking a little bit about the stuff that I don't like so much about Microtik. Now I know that's a bit weird coming from a channel that's got hundreds of videos covering Microtik type of solutions and setup and tutorials and whatnot, but it doesn't mean that there aren't problems that I personally don't like about Microtik. So I think this is a great video just to bring up those points. And I just wanna make this clear, this isn't a me hating on Microtik type of video. This is just more or less me making some points about the things that I think that they could do a bit better. And who knows, maybe somebody there sees the video and it makes them rethink a few things. Or maybe you guys and them might just disagree with me completely and you have your own opinion. So please feel free to share your opini opinions in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it as well. So let's talk about the very first issue that I have with Microtik, that being just how much of a niche market or solution it is. Now, depending on where you are in the world, people approaches Microtik very differently. Where I came from initially, South Africa, a lot of vendors used Microtik, especially for the customer edge, because it's such a cheap and reliable solution to put down on the edge of a customer's network. Now you might go into places like Indonesia, where it's even used a lot more widely. You'll see a lot more Microtik in your core network infrastructure and a lot of people enjoy using it there. But <laughs> in different parts of the world where I've immigrated to, I've specifically gone to Europe. I'm in the United Kingdom now actually. And what I found here while looking for job opportunities and going through interviews and such, none of the companies I've spoken with have even heard of Microtik. The reaction that I usually get when I mention Microtik is something like this. Now, as funny as that is, it's not ideal for somebody that's looking for work because a lot of the times they don't take it as a serious type of vendor. They think it's some weird thing that nobody's even using anywhere. And I'm sure there are companies in the United Kingdom or in Europe in general that makes use of Microtik a lot more frequently, but it does seem to be a very niche market here. And it's strange for me because most of my viewers on the channel are actually based in the United States. So it's definitely not that the first world doesn't use Microtik, they definitely do. It's just that where you are in the world, it's not as actively used. And it's kind of sad for me as well because Microtik is a European company, they're based in Europe, but it seems like most of the companies here will use something like Juniper or Cisco or Nokia for that matter. So just be aware of that. If you do have Microtik and you might immigrate or go somewhere else, you might want to supplement certifications that you have with other vendors like Juniper or Cisco. My second big pain point with Microtik is its certification as well. It's sad to say, but Microtik certification is not considered very good almost by the rest of the networking world. I've read on Reddit where people say they think it is a joke. And it's sad for me because since I love Microtik, I want to stand by them. I can also see the point that the people make. No other vendor treats certification the same way as Microtik as far as I'm aware. I love that it is hands-on. I love that they do the open book section with the exam, which allows you to go into the documentation and figure things out because that reflects the real world a lot better. However, since there's this low barrier of entry, nobody treats it seriously. Also, the fact that you do not learn any foundational networking skills, you do not become a network engineer by learning Microtik, you learn how to use Microtik when doing their certification. It's all about Router OS and how the features and functions works on their solution or networking platform, but it's not going to teach you how to be a like CCIE or JNCIE level type of engineer. It's funny because when I went for an interview with a hiring manager, I explained that I have the MTC INE, which is Microtik's highest level of certification. It is their equivalent of a CCIE, but it does not equate a CCIE. It doesn't mean that I have the same level of understanding. I'm, I'm not going to say passion because I'm definitely very passionate about networking. Let's rework it. Dedication is the word that I want to use because if you're going for something like the Juniper or Cisco IE certifications, you're gonna put in so much time and effort to achieve it. You can see how much effort they've put into it to obtain it, tears, sweat, blood, all of that. And for me, just having the MTC INE, where I went for like a three day boot camp and then wrote it, even though I had the knowledge of how BGP and MPLS and that stuff functions beforehand, 
it doesn't put me at the same level as any of those other engineers. So whenever I apply for service provider type of positions, they're interested in the, the IE side of marketing, but it's not the same as any of the bigger vendors. And it's even the same for like the MTCNA versus the CCNA. With the CCNA, you would learn a lot more foundational skills. You'll learn how networking works as a whole. Same with the JNCIA. Juniper lets you learn how networking works. <laughs> the very first module for the JNCIA is how does a network work? That's not with marketing. Marketing's training is literally just, you need to understand how TCP IP works. You need to understand how subnetting works. You need to understand how routing in essence works. And that just really saddens me a bit. And I think that they need to rework the certification process a little bit. They don't have to make it a three month type of thing for you to achieve the certificate. They can still keep it hands-on, instructor led, all that good stuff. But I do think it needs a little bit more substance. I think it needs a little bit more meat on it. I think that they still need to redo the certification for router-ish version 7, which has been out for a couple of years now. And then we'll see how things look. Maybe Microtech makes the certification a little bit better and a little bit more credible so that if you show the certification to a vendor, they'll be like, yeah, no, this is pretty good certification. So let's quickly just talk about the third and last point I wanna bring up. And that is just how strange the feature set for Microtech is. Now I mentioned that it is feature rich before, which it definitely is at the price point that you get it for. You got a lot of cool features, especially on the routing front, like BGP, OSPF, MPLS. For me, it seems like Microtech is trying to make a one shoe fits all sizes type of solution because it's definitely very strange if I, as an ISP, am deploying core equipment to provide stuff like MPLS services to a customer, and then my router has kid control on it. Why am I going to need kid control? What am I going to do with it? There's no point in it. On the reverse end as well, why would a home user need these advanced routing features? Why would a home user need stuff like MPLS, VXLAN, uh, you know, the BGP? And don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are some niches, niche users in that case. Kevin is one of them. <laughs> that guy will probably be running an MPLS network inside his house as well. Um, but not everybody does that. The average home user will not care for things like that. They will just want the best Wi-Fi performance and they will just want basic internet connectivity. Since Marketic is trying to kind of please everybody, it just has this one big mess of a solution that has a little bit of everything everywhere. And on that point as well, there are features that a lot of people in the carrier or ISP space has been requesting for for long times. So there's stuff like BGP flow spec, You've got stuff like ISIS, which is funny. And it, coincidentally, this is why I'm on this website, uh, the marketing documentation. If you go to the routing and you look at the routing protocol overview, great place to come and see what's currently available with router S version seven and which features they're currently working on to try and support. If it's green, it means it's good. If it's yellow or red, it means it's not good. You're not going to use it. Apologies, if you are colorblind, you can also just hover over the cells and it will tell you which color it is. But if we scroll through this list, here I can see a lot of missing features, but I see Microtik has put ISIS on their scope. So they are planning on doing ISIS. It's not currently in version 7.12, at least not in the release candidate builds, which I've got running on my own equipment, but I'm happy to see it. But how long is it realistically going to take to provide ISIS to the rest of the community? And this only recently came on the list. And I think this is because of the podcast that Kevin had with Giannis like eight months ago and that really took like almost a year just to get to this point of supporting maybe ISIS and if we go down lots of BGP stuff missing lots of MPLS stuff missing stuff like EVPN does not exist on Microtik so you're not going to have that address family with BGP to use there's also a lot of missing core features in my opinion like high availability even though Microtik supports stuff like vrrp i had to make a video years ago covering a custom script created by nathan one that basically did this type of stacking type of thing between two units where config was being shared and pushed between the units so that you can work on one logical device but if there's a failure on the master device, the secondary device can just take over. That's kind of like an active passive type of solution. You do have active active solutions as well, but Microtik doesn't have that. That's not natively part of what they support or what they do. And that's really, really frustrating for me because any 
Big Vendor has that. I'm just wondering why is such a critical feature almost not available on their product stack. And on that point as well, we also see that the world is rapidly evolving into software-defined networking as well as automation. And Microtech kind of has a little bit of automation with their scripting and their scheduling software, but they don't have any type of real integration with the big things. There's no central management type of solution that Microtech provides where you could basically connect your Microtechs and configure them from this different control pane. It's all just on the physical equipment itself. So you don't have this cloud-based type of move, or I, I shouldn't even say cloud, I should just say a central manager. Microtech doesn't have that. And most type of vendors will have some type of central management system that you can use. There are definitely a lot of features missing that people want from Microtech and they just don't currently have it. All right, so this will be where I end off the video. I think I've raised enough points of things that I would like to see Microtech change. Again, this is not a me hating on them video. I respect Microtech and I'm very biased towards them many times when it comes to their flaws. But I feel like we need to be realistic about these things and also just talk about it a lot more openly. Not to bring things down, but to maybe move things forward in a constructive manner. Who knows, maybe Microtech sees this video and they take some of these points to heart as well. And we might see some additional improvement. It, again, please, no hate. If you have anything to add in the comments, feel free to add it. Let's talk about it. I hope you had a good time viewing and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.